Hello students, welcome back. So far we have seen the various phases in the digital forensics life cycle. We have also seen the various ways by which we can uh, recover the deleted files even if the hard disk is formatted. We have seen some practical tools, some hands-on experiments using which we have uh, covered the process of data recovery uh, with the help of tools such as Foremost and Scalpel. So in this video we are going to learn about network forensics. Specifically speaking about what is network tapping, what is packet sniffing, what is packet capturing, how is sniffing different from spoofing, what is website penetration, etc. etc. We are also going to make use of tools such as TCP dump, Wireshark, Ethercap, website penetration tools, uh, who is lookup, NS lookup, etc. etc. So let us start our discussion with what exactly is network forensics. So network forensics is basically the uh, branch of forensics which is related to dealing with only networks and gathering information from networks or wi wired or wireless networks. So in this case, we are generally going to speak about wireless networks. So let us start discussing about the various hardware or software components which we are uh, making use of for network forensics. First of all, network tap. What is a network tap? You must have heard about the term tapping, wire tapping. So basically network tap is nothing but a tapping device using which we can come in between the communication of two legitimate users. In this case, the legitimate users could be A and B and we are basically trying to come in, uh, in between the two users A and B similar to a man in the middle attack and try to read or try to hear what they are communicating with each other. So in simple sense, there are two computers communicating with each other inside a network. The most common network could be the internet. And suppose C is the attacker. C is coming in between the communication and listening to what exactly A and B are communicating with each other. So tapper or wire tap or network tap is a device which allows an attacker to, to listen to the communication or eavesdrop to the communication. This is also called as eavesdropping. This is a passive attack. Why is it a passive attack? Well, there are two classifications of attacks. First one is an active attack. Second one is a passive attack. What happens in passive attack is the attacker can simply listen to what is being communicated or what, what sort of communication is happening between the two intended parties or intended entities. The attacker does not actively take part in the communication. The attacker will simply listen to what is uh, traveling through the network but the attacker may or may not take any active part in the communication that is what we call as a passive attack whereas in the case of active attack if the attacker actively takes part in the communication if the attacker tries to read the content and change it or modify the content and then forward it to B then it is what we call as a active attack that is the active version of the man in the middle attack so a tapper is basically a device which the attacker may plant into the network and try to listen to the communication between A and B. That is what we call as a tap. Similarly, the next concept is port mirroring. What is the meaning of port mirroring? Port mirroring is basically used on a network switch to send a copy of network packets seen on one switch port to a network monitoring connection on another switch port. So basically port mirroring, like uh, it is like uh, projecting your screen on the wall. It is similar to that concept. What you are doing is you are basically using, it is basically, it is basically used on a network switch. Listen to it. It is used on a network switch to send a copy of the network packets, which arrive on its port to a network uh, monitoring connection on some other port, on some other switch port. So what happens is there is a switch inside a network and this switch is basically sending the copy of the network packets seen on one switch port to a network monitoring connection on another switch port. So basically all the packets that arrive on this switch port are copied and sent to an, another network component, uh, another network components switch ports. So it, it is again very risky because whatever packets you are receiving, you are forwarding all those packets to some other uh, switch port. So 
this is totally risky because all the packets which arrive over here can be read by this particular switch also. So this is another device which is basically used for network forensics or network attacks. Similarly, what is the concept called as promiscuous mode? Now what happens is promiscuous mode is also called as promisc mode, right? It is a mode for wired NICs or wired network interface controllers. What happens is this allows or this causes the controller to pass all the traffic it receives on its ports rather than passing only the frames that the controller is intended to receive. It simply means if I am a network uh, interface card, if I am a particular uh, controller, uh, I will just take an example. I will just, for example, I will just take a real life example. I am receiving some uh, pamphlets from a particular person and I'm forwarding the pamphlets to each and every person I meet on my way. Even if the person is not willing to accept the pamphlets, I am still forwarding all those pamphlets to that person, to who, whoever I meet on my way to my home or to my work, whatever. So similar, similarly over here, when a network interface controller is in the promiscuous mode, whichever packet it receives, it will forward all those packets irrespective of whether the destination is actually wanting to receive the packet or not. So we can simply correlate this with the broadcasting mode. That is whatever I receive, I forward it simply as a port forwarder, right? So that is what we call as promiscuous mode. Similarly, now we are going to learn about the tools which we are going to use in our network forensics lab. First one is Wireshark. The most popular of them is Wireshark. Wireshark is a packet analyzer, uh, open source packet analyzer. It is available in Linux as well as in Windows. So if you are having a Windows machine, you can make use of the Windows equivalent. If you are uh, running a Linux machine, specifically if you are having Kali Linux, then it will be already installed over there. If you are having any other version of Linux, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, then you can simply download it from the repositories. It's readily available as an open source application. With the use of Wireshark, we can actually start monitoring the entire communication. It can even work in the stealth mode. Whenever we run Wireshark, it will actually start capturing the packets. Uh, you can even filter out the packets based upon the protocols it is following. You can even filter out the packets based upon the port numbers. You're going to learn in the practical uh, experiments. You're going to learn in the hands-on session how we can make use of uh, Wireshark to capture passwords uh, which are flowing in, in a network, whether they are encrypted or unencrypted. If they're unencrypted, we can easily read the contents of that password. If they are encrypted, we will get the encrypted file and we further need to analyze it to crack it or break it using any uh, cracking software. So that is the main use of the uh, packet analyzer Wireshark. Next up, let's see how Wireshark actually looks like. I will show it to you in much detail whenever we will start the practicals, but for the time being, let's have a look at the screenshot of how the Wireshark interface looks like. This is how Wireshark starts capturing the packets. At what time the packet was created? What is the source IP address? What is the destination IP address? Which protocol is being followed over there? And some basic information about those packets. Next step, we are going to learn about a tool that is what we call as TCP dump. Now TCP dump is yet again a packet analyzer that we can run even from the command line. So we are having some experiments on Wireshark as well as TCP dump. As you can see, packet capture using TCP dump. Next, packet sniffing and analysis using Ethercap and Wireshark. So we are going to learn what exactly is TCP dump. We are going to learn what exactly is Wireshark, how they are different in terms of their architecture. We are going to make use of both these tools and you can then differentiate which one is better suited for your task. Both both are packet analyzers, both are used for capturing the packets. Both are used for packet capturing, whereas Wireshark has an added advantage of packet analysis through a GUI. Whereas TCP dump is not having a GUI, that is the basic difference between these two applications. So we are going to learn about TCP dump and Wireshark much in detail. So these were uh, the network components, network forensics. Now let me give you a brief uh, introduction of what exactly is packet sniffing. Now we have already discussed that there are two types of attacks, active and passive. Now 
if I'm only reading the contents without modifying the packet contents, then I am performing a passive attack. Now, what I'm actually trying to do is I'm sniffing what is traveling between A and B. That is, this is a network. All the communication ideally should go like this. But now if I have installed a network tapper in place, then the communication will go like this. Now what happens, it's entirely up to the attacker. If the attacker wants to passively read the contents, it is nothing but a passive attack. And that is what we call as sniffing. Whereas if the attacker actively changes the IP address of the destination and uh, modifies it to his or her own IP address, then that is what we call as an active attack, specifically known as IP spoofing or spoofing attacks. So that is the main difference between sniffing and spoofing. One is passive, one is active. So I hope you got the basic understanding of what exactly Network Forensics is all about. We are going to learn much in detail how Network Forensics is carried out, how an attack is carried out, and how we can make use of tools such as Wireshark, TCP dump, etc. to carry out the forensics of this particular sort of network attack. So stay tuned for the next videos. We are going to learn about password cracking, web attacks, information gathering, and vulnerability analysis in the next set of videos. So stay tuned. <music>